The wet black beetle is probably one of my favourite river fishing flies. I have used it for tailing fish and so on. Um, back in the old days, there was a, a group of um, Tasmanian, northern Tasmanian fly fishermen, one of whom was a fellow called Philip Fisher, um, who was a long-term member of one of the fly clubs in the north, probably a compatriot of Skulls and those sort of people. But he and Charles Peck, um, he's the creator of the Peck's Dunn, used to do a lot of river fishing. Um, which I love doing, but they fished a wet black beetle. So they were polaroiding fishing, but they were fishing to fish they could see in the current with a wet fly. Um, so they were watching the fly and watching the fish. And more often than not, um, it was the wet black beetle, which is what they use. So it's got, a, it's got some lead in it. I'm just using really fine lead because I just want to build up a, a light lead wire body before I put the dubbing on. Um, again, it's one of those things you just want it to plip rather than plop. If you're fishing really fast water, um, probably doesn't lend itself to using this fly. This is one of those flies you use when you're polaroiding fish in a stream, those little gravel bed streams, which are probably about knee deep, um, frog's depth. And um, get it? See what I did there? Knee deep, frog's depth? Yeah, right, I'll move on. Um, where you can actually see the fish on the edge of the current. So you can actually watch the fish. It's one of those times when they won't really come up and have a dry. So, um, What's that hook size? the hook size is a size 12 um, Camazan B160. So I go around the bend a little bit with this one and I build up just a little bit of a, um, a base, which is where I'm going to tie the, um, the crow feather for the wing case. And I'll tie that in before I wind the lead. Now with this, I'm going to tie the crow in by the, by the very tips. There's a reason for that, and I'll explain that when I get a little bit down the track. Right, then I'm just going to bring my thread to the front. Knock it. You could probably use heavier lead wire than this. I just, I just prefer lighter weighted flies than heavier ones, mainly because when I'm fishing in streams, I fish a six foot six three weight, and while fishing with bead head flies catches a lot of fish, they just drive me to drink um, when it comes to casting them. And most of fly fishing is about the casting, because we do more of that than we do catching fish, so you might as well enjoy it. Right Righto. A little bit of lead wire, doesn't matter how rough it is, but just give it a few wraps up and down with thread just so it doesn't slip. Oops. Right, now we want to dub it. Now um, you can use all sorts of dubbing, I like that, that black stonefly stuff which I tied the nymphs out of before, bear in mind that's round the wrong way, it's got a bit of sparkle. Um, it does help load it up. You can use black seals fur. Um, sometimes I've done a mix of um, peacock glister, which is a beautiful sort of blacky, greeny sort of, mm. just gives a nice lift. Um, so what we might do with this one, we'll just do a nice tight little body. So we'll use the squirrel, the black black stone fly bend rather. It's got it sitting here if you want to come and get it or pinch a bit. And again with all thick dub bodies because you're building this up to be beetle shaped, you really just want to build it up in layers. Um, if you build it up too thick too soon you end up with a fly that um, just doesn't look quite right after it's either caught a few fish or been stuck up a few trees. And if you fish a lot of rivers your flies will get stuck up trees. Um, just when you wind this on just give a nice little thick butt right at the back because that'll help um, spread the wing case as we come over. You don't want the wing case like a nymph where it's just over the top. You really want it to come out and around the sides. Mm. Um, that's one of the great challenges of tying beetles. They look like a simple fly, but they're not really. Probably just give that a little bit more. It's, a, it's an intriguing way to fish rivers um, with a beetle. You'll learn, you'll learn a lot about yourself and how much 
stress you can put up with. Right, oh, now we want to bring that forward, and like I said, we really just want to curve it out and around the side. It doesn't matter if it breaks a bit, just so we've got a, a bit of a dome happening. How's that look on the. Probably get it to roll more that way. And then flip that down like that. So it's a very uncomplicated fly. Um, which for river fishing is probably just as well because you will lose them up the bloody trees. If you're not losing flies up trees, you're probably not fishing in the right places. And with a fly like that, I'd just give it a little bit of a, I could fit that through the gate. Just a few little legs, doesn't matter that much. It's really just a black silhouette. And again, if you can see a fish in the current, instead of casting right up in front of it, cast it to one side. So make the fish turn to one side so that when the, when the this is the fish's mouth, the fly, mm -hmm. if it comes in like that, sometimes it doesn't quite make the best connection. But if he's like that when he grabs it, then you've got a full right angle so when the hook goes in. Same as polaroiding up the lakes, you really want them to turn sideways to your fly. The worst hooking angle for any fish is when it's coming straight at you and the fly is pointing at, at like that. And every now and again you'll get gazumped like that.